Hello, and welcome back to another installment of my Mass Effect Multiplayer Guides. Uh, I'm going to take some suggestions I've received and try to be pretty brief uh, on the power screen. So today I'm going to be uh, presenting a guide for the Batarian Sentinel. I call it the uh, Shock and Submit build because I basically only use Shockwave and Submission Net and I ignore Blade Armor. Um, let me get right into... Uh, I ignore Blade Armor simply because it's not worth it, the trade-off. There's not enough uh, melee damage, in my opinion, none of damage reduction, and the cooldown penalty is far, far too great, in my opinion, as well. Shockwave and Submission Net are both fantastic powers, and I wouldn't be willing, after extensive testing, to forego them. So let's get to Shockwave. Shockwave is a highly underrated power. Um, I'll talk about it in the actual gameplay commentary a lot more. But for rank 4, I choose Force and Damage, because Radius is bugged. It won't work properly, it'll just go through enemies, and force of damage, in my opinion, if you aim properly, is a lot better in general. Uh, more damage is always good. Then I cho choose Reach. Why do I choose Reach? Uh, for the simple reason that I, even though you can set up Bionic Combos much more powerfully with Detonate, uh, the Batarian only has Shockwave, and it's situational if other teammates are using Biotics. So with Reach, you have a 24 meter range, which is fantastic. And finally, I choose the recharge speed, why? because uh, the lifting shockwave is just not really relevant to me. I'd rather have them staggered or just fly off the screen really quickly. Okay, so that's that. Submission net. Uh, I choose incapacitate, because I'm somewhat less concerned about uh, damage and more concerned about keeping them uh, incapacitated for a longer period of time. Then I choose damage and slow. Uh, the recharge rate isn't only minimally effective, but it's a bit more damage. And you do actually notice the difference on Brutes and Atlases if you uh, haven't charged against Geth like um, Pyros. But it's quite good. The slow armored uh, targets, it, it does actually make a significant difference sometimes. And finally, the electric field. Why? Because it's incredibly good crowd control. Um, you can put it on a, you throw the net on an enemy and, well, anyway, you can read the description. So that's that. Batarian Enforcer, I try to go for the best of all worlds. So I go for damage capacity, as well as power damage to max out Shockwave and Submission Net Force and Damage, as well as to um, get the best possible CD. And finally, to make a compromise, because I alternate between pistols and shotguns, I choose damage and ammo. So you get a nice 20% spare ammo capacity and a 32.5% power damage bonus, as well as a significant 17.5% weapon damage bonus, which is quite good. Finally, fitness, because I'm not doing any melee, uh, I go all for health and shields. And this actually more than compensates for uh, the lack of blade armor. As you can see, I have pretty significant health and shields. If you want, you can slap on a cyclonic modulator, and that tends to work pretty well, too. So that's, that's the actual build. Uh, you saw what I did there, and I should talk a lot more about what I'm doing and powers I'm choosing in the gameplay. Thanks for watching. So this will constitute the largest part of the commentary, I think. Some suggestions that were made to me were useful, so uh, in the future I'll be very brief on the power screen, just showing what I've chosen, and then I'll actually talk about most of it in the game. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, blade armor I find pretty useless when compared to choosing powers in general. And the same goes for the Terran Soldier, which I might get back to at some point in time, or rather soonish. The reason being that as fun as melee builds are, they leave you very exposed. Falcon Punch has a very slow windup, and Blade Armor doesn't offer enough incentives to choose it. Blade Armor offers a very poor damage reduction compared to virtually every other form of power um, protection, armor protection, including tech armor, barrier, as well as fortification. The 45% extra melee damage is nice, but I don't think it's significant enough to justify it. Um, and the cooldown penalty, a whopping 60%, uh, is simply, well, not worth uh, dealing with, especially if you want to be able to use your powers frequently. I often say cooldowns cool down, cool down don't matter, but sometimes they do, and in this particular build they actually do matter. My suggestion, as well as some others I've talked to for Blade Armor, would be to um, change the base cooldown rate to 40%, uh, sorry, the base cooldown penalty to 40%, um, increase the maximum damage protection to 40% if you so choose as well, uh, sorry, damage reduction, and to uh, increase the melee damage bonus uh, much more significantly, make it 
perhaps even 85%. That would, might really justify things. Uh, you might be able to just two-shot thing, things with a uh, normal melee attack. So enough about blade armor. It's not as efficient overall as playing without it. Um, and like I said, fitness and health make up for, if you choose the fitness and health chain uh, branch, it will make up for blade armor almost 90%. Let's talk about Shockwave, a very highly underrated power. Shockwave has so many applications, it's not even funny. One of the most powerful aspects of Shockwave is the fact that it travels through solid objects. And it's not like armor piercing, it literally will travel through 10 feet walls, a 10 foot walls, 10 meter walls if need be. Um, this is a tremendous advantage, when, especially when you can't directly attack your enemies. The damage output is not amazing, but it's decent. But the most important thing about Shockwave, in my opinion, are two aspects. One, its spammability has a very low uh, cooldown, provided you have a reasonably low cooldown uh, on your Shockwave. Of course, related to the weapon you're using. The other uh, very important thing is it staggers everything. It staggers Phantoms, it staggers Atlases, it staggers Broods. It's really, really useful. Um, it does a lot of damage. If you happen to have a Biotic on your team, it will create pretty powerful Biotic explosions, even if you don't choose that evolution. So as I said, Radius is bugged. There's nothing to do about that now, but I would choose Power and Force anyway, because it's just much more effective, I think. And 2.6 meters uh, area of effect versus 2 meters is not significant enough. If it, if it became 3.6, I would think, hmm, it might be worth taking, but that's not the case. I take uh, the range, because it's a base range of 16 meters, plus 50% is 24 meters. That means you can almost hit enemies across the screen. They usually don't try to dodge it. It's not like a, a, a warp or a throw. So it, they can't really dodge it, provided you're throwing it in their line of sight. It's very effective. Finally, uh, I don't care about lifting targets in, in the air. I want a lower cooldown, and so I just choose that evolution. Now, with regards to Shockwave, uh, I, I run the Batarian Sentinel basically with three weapons. Either the Grawl, which I've found a fondness for again, the Talon or the Paladin, just depending on what the map is, the enemies, and so on and so forth. Uh, the Paladin and Talon will give me, um, as well as the card effects would as well, a 200% cooldown with the Grawl. I'm looking at 4 145%, which is still plenty. Um, and I'll talk about the weapons uh, in a bit. Punch submission net. Very, very underrated power. In fact, I was one of the people who at some point in time was very critical of it. It was it was, the travel uh, distance or the travel speed was much needed this buff which was done a couple of months ago. It could be a little buffed a little bit more in my opinion in terms of travel speed. Uh, I would love to see it uh, catch two enemies, but as it is, it's a very, very good power. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it's very, very good. Let's compare briefly submission net to stasis. Stasis uh, has several advantages over submission net. You can uh, choose the bubble effect, you can hold up to two enemies, enemies receive more damage, it's instant cast, they can't avoid it, it's in that sense much more reliable. However, uh, submission net has a longer duration uh, if you choose the duration, which is about a little over eight seconds, and it has Two other features that um, the sorry, three other features that Stasis does not have. One, it does DOT for eight seconds. I think if you saw the screen, it does over 500 points of damage to the enemy trapped within the net, which is not insignificant. Fantastic. It's very good, in fact. The other evolution, evolution five, is the extra damage, but also the, the slow armor. So it slows Atlases down, which are kind of irrelevant. But I also, if you Provided it's not too close, if you hit a brute with it, it'll slow down its approach to you, which is significant because it'll give you time to, well, kill it from range. So the armor slowed down, and I imagine, I haven't used on I don't play Geth, I imagine it will be very, very effective against Geth too, for the simple reason that pyros are slow to begin with, you might slow them down to a standstill, as well as uh, Geth primes and what have you. So that could be quite useful. Otherwise, submission net, of course, would affect all other kinds of geth because they're not uh, running around with armor. Finally, really, really important and incredibly, incredibly powerful crowd control device is the shock effect, the electric field. Uh, an enemy, provided an enemy is trapped within the net, 
any enemy that comes within six meters, that's a large raise, will be shocked for, I think it was something like 180 points of damage. The damage is negligible, but the important thing to pay attention to is the fact that they're staggered, stunned for an entire second usually when they get close there. So it's very, very useful. Let's talk about um, applying both of these powers. So let's go, go back to Shockwave. Shockwave can be used for so many purposes, it's not funny. Setting off biotic combos. I mostly use it for, I spam it a lot, for staggering enemies. Um, if you're about to get instant killed by a phantom, uh, one before, just before she's about to follow up, in my opinion, Shockwave is the answer to tech armor explosion, because it staggers the enemy phantoms, it knocks them back. Um, it goes through walls, so if you can't uh, you know, recover it, you can hit enemies all the time. And because of its high spam ability, I believe with a Grawl 145% cooldown, Grawl 10, I, have a, I still have a 2.54 second cooldown, which is very good. Uh, if I take a Carnifex Paladin or a Talon, I have a 2.03, so it's still it's very, very good in that sense. Um, it does pretty good damage. Usually what I do is I'll shoot an enemy and then I'll follow up with it uh, with a shockwave. Or if they're out of range, or hiding behind massive amounts of cover that even an armor-piercing mod or AP ammo won't reach, I'll just shockwave them. Sometimes it'll knock them out of... not knock them out of cover, but it'll sort of get them to move. Many, many applications, mostly for crowd control. But it does do decent damage and the force is amazing. It staggers everything. Um, Atlases and Brutes less consistently, of course Phantoms will only be staggered if they don't have their stupid barrier heart protection palm thing up, but very, very good. <laughs> Submission net. Uh, very tricky power to use, um, and let me thank my, my teammate friend, Czech Kroner, who gave me some tips on using it and how it became proficient. It has a high learning curve. For one thing, if an enemy if an enemy has not dodged, you probably shouldn't use it because they probably will dodge it at range. It's a power primarily to be used at maximum mid range, uh, but certainly short range, close range, and point blank range. It's very very good. What you want want to do with it when enemies are pretty close is well, just fire it, <laughs> but you have to make sure they're pretty close, especially phantoms. Phantoms are the most dangerous uh, opponent, or submission that will render them helpless. The trick is that they will dodge it much more often than anything else. Their barrier palm protection will block its effects. So one thing to do is, it's risky, but it's very rewarding, is as they're just about to, you know, attack you. I mean, I mean point blank, I mean like two feet away, then you hit submission net. Often you'll be catching them in the motion itself as they're just about to strike you with the sword, but it's very, very effective. Another technique I often use when I take the Grawl is stagger them. If they're staggered, they can't dodge, so in the process of being staggered, I fire a submission net. It's pretty easy after that. Um, but the one other application I want to talk about with regards to submission net that I don't think I use in this video is as a trap. Submission net, in contrast to stasis, for a very long period of time can be laid as a trap, sort of at choke points. Put it at the entrance, for example. Any enemy provided doesn't have armor that walks in will be trapped. Enemies surrounding, of course, the, uh, that enemy will be electrocuted by the electric field effect. Very, very effective. Um, sometimes uh, you can well, lock down groups of four or five enemies because one is trapped and the other, well, others are just being shot to death. Very, very effective. So try to use it at close range. Um, at long range, enemies, I'd say even 70% of the time, will, will dodge it, um, provided they're not in cover. Sometimes you can sneak up on enemies, and if they're hiding behind cover, you can get them, even phantoms. Um, but um, it does take a lot of practice, so I would urge people to practice with it. It's a very, very good power. I'd say it's almost, it's not quite on par with stasis overall, because stasis is instant cast, but it has a lot of advantages, as I said. Talk about weapon choices. Weapon choices, you know, I'm not prescriptive, but I would suggest suggest using a weapon that is uh, offers a pretty right. low cooldown. Uh, I wouldn't want to go under 100% CD on this build because you want to be able to use submission net pretty often. More importantly, you want to be able to spam shockwave frequently. Um, power spamming. I'm not always a huge fan, but it's it's quite effective to use that. Combine it with a nice weapon. You can take out enemies pretty quickly. 
So whatever weapons you have available, whatever you feel comfortable with, this is totally up to you. you know, if you like assault rifles, go for it. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you have a low CD. Personally, what I like to run with, as I said, uh, map dependent and enemy dependent. Uh, the Grawl, this is actually, by the way, I don't want to go on a tangent, but it's also very effective against Reapers. Uh, even, I, I, you'd think it wouldn't be, but, you know, the slowdown effect is pretty cool, and Shockwave is, all, is always as good against anything. If I'm fighting Reapers or Cerberus, both, then I, I choose the Grawl, it works for both uh, enemies quite well. For Cerberus, uh, Shockwave mitigates the necessity of having some kind of armor-piercing mod. The, pro the reason being, uh, sh uh, Guardian Shields are always a pain in the ass if you don't have a, a weapon that can use an armor-piercing mod or AP ammo, which Grawl cannot. But Shockwave has uh, such an immense force, it pops their shields, you probably see a couple of instances in the video, and you can headshot them, body shot them, it usually just takes one shot to kill them afterwards. Headshots usually. That's not an issue. Nah. Reapers, the Grawl is really good as well because Grawl ignores uh, Grawl ignores uh, damage uh, reduction from armor completely, and it works really, really well with incendiary ammo. Um, it just burns things to death really quickly. Alternatively, something I run with both factions as well is the Talon, which I'm using in the video. I like the, the Talon, I think, on overall is probably one of my favorite guns. It's sort of multi-purpose. It's got terrible range, though, so I tend to use it only on small to medium maps. If I'm running with a very... on, on a map with a very large uh, area, like Hydra, or maybe... maybe Giant as well, I will tend to take either the Grawl or the Paladin. Well, the Paladin Hello. isn't that great against Reapers because yeah. the, the simple fact is that shotguns as well as the Talon have multiple pallets, so pellets. So having, say, some incendiary ammo will increase that effect, the damage over time. So it's up to you. Um, a rapid fire weapon might be good as well. Uh, I don't have the Hurricane, I can imagine that being pretty effective. Uh, Know, while the enemies are dodging back and forth, you could you know, slap them with a submission net, and so on and so forth. So that could be quite effective. Good, a decent AR might be quite effective. Um, saber. I'd avoid sniper rifles for the simple reason that this is, even though you're not a melee build, a CQC build. Uh, you are close co quarters combat for the most part. At, at best, you're fighting at medium range. You don't want to, because you're not going to be as effective at long range. Good thing for Batarians, they're the second fastest runners after um, after Drill, so that compensates for it. If you want to slap on Adrenaline Module, it'll be even faster. Cyclonic Modulator will give you even more durability. Um, finally, uh, talking about weapon mods, whatever, I, I, I try to use a, a, if I'm using a shotgun, draw a shotgun rail amp, um, I alternate between a Cyclonic Modulator and Adrenaline consumable. The um, the ammo type I use is, is uh, usually incendiary, although sometimes I'll use uh, disruptor on the rare occasions that I fight Geth, which I haven't done with this one yet. I use disruptor, uh, but mostly incendiary. Ever since the character cards got filled up, I've been getting tons and tons of um, level four ammo, especially incendiary. So I like using it. Might as well use it. Finally, the uh -huh. gear, 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 gear. If you're running with a shotgun, take whatever your shotgun uh, gear might be that's going to enhance it. What I really like when I'm running with a pistol, either the Paladin or the Talon, is the Commando Package, which gives you a decent 10% bonus to both bionic damage, i.e. Shockwave, and, and the Talon itself. <laughs> Pardon me. So. And you see the things I'm talking about, how I apply it in the video. You know, at one point in time, my teammate was about to get instant killed. I hit submission net, and I saved him because Phantom got caught in it. Uh, they can be caught in midair. A um, lot of applications. You might, you probably will see some future videos with this build as well. It's a lot of fun, and it, it's below in terms of effectiveness, just much more effective than a melee build. Like I said, if they wanted to go melee. It's fun, it's still reasonably effective, but um, 
Blade Armor really needs a huge buff, in my opinion, to make it viable. A viable choice to renounce the other two very, very effective powers. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's been this guide. The Shotgun Submits Batarian Sentinel. And I might be doing a reprising of the Batarian Soldier, because I also favor uh, a non-melee build on him now as well. And... Yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, see each other soon, hopefully. Okay. Thank you. 